Tonight, we have our own Kurt Schwartz giving us a presentation on his recent trip to South Africa. Kurt is retired from the DOD and has been a Maryland resident since 1979. He has been birding since the mid-1990s and has observed 1,301 bird species worldwide. He is a semi-retired conservation chair for the MOS and Howard County Bird Club. He was the conservation chair for the bird club for 18 years. Wow. Um, he's a former president of the bird club and he has led countless field trips and presented programs over the years. So thank you, Kurt, and we're looking forward to your talk. Okay, here goes nothing. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, thanks for letting me uh, present. Can we do something about the lights? Yes. Please? All right, there, we're shared. Very good. Okay. Well, except there, oh, there we go. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, if you go to Africa to look for birds, unfortunately, there are all these pesky megafauna running around, too. Uh, this was uh, an elephant we encountered on one of our game drives, and uh, needless to say, uh, he had the right of way. Uh, unfortunately, the driver of our vehicle did know how to find reverse, and we did back up quite a distance before the elephant turned to the side and started munching away on the vegetation. Uh, the trip was September 26th through October 10th, uh, 2023. Uh, we flew direct from Newark Airport to Johannesburg. That's, that's, 2022. Huh? that's in the future. That's, that's 2022. That's fall. Um, <laughs> I need to edit that. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> My traveling. I don't know where the hell I am on the space time continuum. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I'm always confused. Uh, but it was it was a direct flight from Newark to uh, Johannesburg. It involved a really bizarre arrangement of driving up to Doylestown, Pennsylvania, getting a driver to take us to the Newark airport, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But we did have a direct flight, which uh, was uh, 15 hours. And uh, uh, we, we sprang for business class, so we did have full reclining. So we actually managed to sleep on the flight. Uh, we flew into Johannesburg and then immediately up to Savvy Sands Game Reserve uh, for, four, game, for four nights. Then to, uh, you want to pronounce that Finda, but they all pronounce it Pinda Game Reserve for another four nights, uh, several nights in Cape Town. Then to Franschuk, which is in the wine region of South Africa. They actually make some pretty decent wine in South Africa. And then uh, out on the last morning, we had a, a trip out to Robben Island. Uh, 208 uh, total bird species, 189 were live birds. Uh, I managed to get photos of 132 and audio recordings of an additional four. Uh, the first uh, night uh, we spent there, I woke up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. There's a bird singing out there already. It turned out to be something called a courage, curry chain brush, uh, something very much like a robin and they're up at three, four o'clock in the morning singing already. I did not get a picture of one. Uh, <laughs> as soon as it was light, I was out wandering around the grounds and the first bird I got a picture of was a collared dove. This is an African collared dove, slightly different or a different species from the Eurasian collared dove, the dove that we get here in North America and certainly throughout Eurasia. I think the primary distinguishing characteristic is a contrasting white belly on the African collared dove which the Eurasian one lacks. Uh, then there are also some other very colorful pigeons, this called, called the Ramaron. And then here we have another thing rather not unlike our, our robins, the Kar Karu thrush. Again, these are all in the hotel grounds, which was somewhere out on the fringes of the Johannesburg. And then Cape Sparrow, this is a relative of, to the house sparrow that we all know. Uh, genus passer, whatever. Uh, lighting obviously was not real great that morning. And then we got on an airplane from Johannes, or excuse me, uh, from the Johannesburg airport up to a place called Skuza. This is the airport that serves Kruger National Park. Uh, we did not go to Kruger, but it's also uh, where our access to uh, Savvy Sands Game Reserve is where we picked this up. And that is my wife. Uh, Patsy there on the right. And on the drive into the camp, oh boy, giraffe. 
It's a nice, uh, nice, nice things to see by the side of the road as you're driving to, uh, to, to your game camp. Uh, in the Cape, uh, the Cape, uh, excuse me, the camp itself, Savvy Sam's, we had Impalas virtually every day. Uh, in addition to the Impalas, uh, well, one of the first birds I saw there was a Southern Cordon Blue. This is a little, little blue finch. Um, Tasty bird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Stuff, stuff with ham and cheese. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, there's another name for it, and uh, it's really confusing because there are several field guides and they all seem to have differing names uh, because of when they were published and so forth. But I think this is the current approved English name. Uh, yeah, we had a lizard running around on the deck. Uh, African pied wagtail would go wandering by, uh, just bopping along, flicking its tail and so forth. Uh, several swallows would come in and perch on the lamps, this being the, uh, the wire-tailed swallow. You can see what they mean by the wire right there. And uh, this was the view out the back of our room from the cabin that we had. It was a very comfortable, uh, very comfortable room and so forth. Uh, you weren't allowed to come out of your cabin at night because there were creatures there that could eat you. Uh, uh, another one of the, the creatures that we had wandering around in camp was this larger antelope called the Niala. This is the female. Uh, there's me just. There's the male. There's the male. <laughs> uh, they have better starlings than we do. <laughs> This being the greater blue-eared starling, and these are birds that we just saw, like from the deck or, or from the from the porch where we dined. Typically, uh, there was a really big tortoise running around at one point, and then this is the male niawa, again with the vertical white stripes, like you saw in the female, but much darker and just sort of a, a mane or whatever you want to call it. Some pretty darn big horns. Uh, this woodpecker was was excavating a hole right up, uh, basically on on the porch area where we had where we dined, provided lots of entertainment. And this is a little creature called the yellow-breasted apalis. Uh, again, this is just lounging around, uh, you know, having a cold drink, and what's floating around in the trees outside the uh, the uh, outside the uh, uh, yeah off the deck. Uh, the equivalent or the ecological niche filled by our hummingbirds in the old world and in particular in Africa is filled by sunbirds. Uh, they're small, they're colorful, they do not hover or go backwards like a hummingbird, but otherwise, uh, you know, they, they, they go for nectar and all that sort of thing. Uh, this unfortunately is a little bit obscured by the branch, but the Mariko sunbird. Uh, Egyptian geese, if you see them in Florida, you can count them in North America because they're naturalized there. But uh, this is where Egyptian geese are supposed to be in Africa. This, this pair just came wandering through like the first afternoon. And then another bird, or excuse me, another antelope that appeared in camp was this clip springer. Cute little guys, not much bigger than a large dog. And uh, we, we had some, some parrots uh, show up, the brown-headed parrot here. There weren't a lot of parrots. I think this, this is the only one I can think of that I got, actually got a picture of, and I'm not sure if we had any others other than the brown hood. Oh, uh, yes. This is the Southern Yellow-Billed Hornbill, which one of our guides or one of our tractors named Lennox referred to as the flying banana. <laughs> Here's another one of the nice looking starlings. Uh, what we would typically do is uh, in the afternoon, uh, when we first got there, we went for a game drive of several hours. Uh, we had dinner, spent the night, got up the next morning, had a little bite to eat, then we'd go out on a morning game drive. After about two hours of that, they pull over and get out the hot chocolate. Uh, and coffee, and uh, yes, sometimes, or uh, there, there was uh, some alcohol that they would spike, spike the hot chocolate with. Uh, and then we'd drive around for another couple of hours, then go back and have breakfast. 
Uh, then we mostly had downtime in the afternoon, then an afternoon game drive where at sundown they pull over, set up the bar, gins and tonic, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, there is a liqueur there called the Amarula uh, that comes from the Amarula tree and so forth. It's uh, quite tasty and uh, will uh, re really spice up your, your hot chocolate. Okay, but another nice starling. And then here we have the southern red bill hornbill, which Lennox referred to as the flying chili pepper. And no, Lennox was not our tracker there. I, I can't remember what the, the fellow's name was. Lennox was the guy we had in Pinda. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Uh, you see a few wildebeest running around. Now, interestingly enough, you know, all you know, you've all seen the things of the like Serengeti and stuff like that, and hordes and hordes of wildebeest and zebras and stuff like that. We never saw big herds of much of anything. Uh, it's onesies and twosies and maybe a small group to include the wildebeest. Uh, this is the lilac breasted roller, perhaps one of the best known African birds. Uh, they're quite colorful. Uh, I've got several photos of these guys. Here we have another one of the sunbirds, the white-breasted. <laughs> and then here's another hornbill. Uh, hornbills basically fill the same niche in the old world that toucans do in the new world. Uh, they're... <laughs> I've lost my cash. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, uh, they're big, uh, they eat a lot of fruit and so forth. And uh, so this one's not quite as colorful as the other two. And then here's the crested barbet. Uh, I guess it's the only one we saw the whole time, but uh, he this one posed very nicely, I think. We encountered African hunting dogs every day when we were at Savvy Sam's. Uh, we were told that we would be very lucky to see them, and boy, did we see them, and we saw them well in large packs. And uh, uh, you'll see, see an example a little further along. Uh, another giraffe. Oh, hum. <laughs> There's a bird on his back. Is there? Yeah, probably an oxpecker. Yeah. Right there. Did it? Okay. I gotta look at these pictures closer. There maybe it's, 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 is it is it is it not thicker? It's not a uh, Yeah, it could be. You never know. Uh, uh, here we have a Swainson Franklin, little chicken-like birds. Uh, these were running around you know, like in the dirt roads and stuff like that. And here we have the African black-headed oriole. Uh, these orioles are not not related to our orioles. They're uh, like a different you know, whatever in terms of taxonomy and stuff like that. Uh, but it's very a very attractive bird. And then the spotted hyena, uh, we saw them on several occasions. And here we have the Cape buffalo. Uh, these uh, are generally considered to be fairly dangerous. You don't want to provoke one. <laughs> Give them a wide berth. And then speaking of oxpecker, this is the yellow-billed oxpecker. This certainly was the most common one that we saw. There are two species. There's the yellow-billed and the red-billed. Uh, red-billed? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I'll have a red-billed a little further along. Uh, and here we came across a big pack, excuse me, pride of lions just lounging around in the sand in a dry riverbed. Uh, I forget how many were in that group, but as you can see, there's what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, at least eight, nine uh, in that photo. And I think there were more, uh, mostly females and maybe some young males, like this young male here. Uh, we encountered the African fishing eagle several times, this being an immature one. And then here we have another small antelope, the uh, the gray common diker. Vultures are very, very prominent in the landscape, uh, especially if there happens to be a corpse. Uh, and uh, uh, I didn't include any pictures here. There was one uh, group of lions we came across that were feasting on the remains of a giraffe. Mm -hmm. uh, that was uh, basically a really big buffet for... <laughs> For the lions, but uh, uh, and there there usually be uh, uh, there were like uh, at least uh, I think we saw three different species of vulture, but I didn't necessarily get pictures of them. 
Oh. Yes, there are birds called go away birds. This is not made up. And it's because the call sounds vaguely like go away, go away, go away. <laughs> and this being the great go away bird, I think there's another two species. I don't remember the names off the top of my head. Uh, I used to have an email address, go away bird at Yahoo, or excuse me, at gmail.com, I think it was. Uh, here we have the white browed cuckoo. Uh, these are related to cuckoos. Uh, and you'll notice there is no white brow. Uh, as you go further north, apparently they do get uh, the white brow and so forth, but for whatever reason, uh, these are considered to be the same species, different subspecies or something like that. And uh, the red-faced mouse bird should be obvious where it gets the name from the red face there. Uh, there are some colorful, dramatic looking storks like this saddle billed stork. And here we have more red billed ox peckers. Oh, no, was the other one? Was that the yellow billed ox pecker? Yeah, okay, sorry. I don't even know my own presentation. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> these were very common you know, for, on, on many of the game animals and so forth. But the yellow billed was, was certainly the rarer of, of the two. And then this is a lizard buzzard. This was a very cool looking hawk that just sat up in that tree and looked at us. I don't know how many frames to have with this bird. <laughs> Uh, this is a kind of eagle called a battler. Uh, it's the only one we saw. It's uh, a little fuzzy, but uh, you know my my my, my camera is, is not great for action shots. So, uh, weaver uh, weavers are all over the place. You'll see large hang uh, trees with large numbers of hanging uh, nests from them. Uh, this being the lesser mast weaver. Uh, one afternoon, I was lurking around behind the cabin, and I spotted this guy flitting around. He turned out to be an ashy flycatcher. I may be the only one to have actually seen this on the trip, since everybody else is taking a nap. <laughs> and then we had this uh, cute little frog nesting on one of the planters outside our deck. Here we have another chicken-like Natal Franklin. Uh, this thing was just running around on the grounds of the, uh, of, of, of the camp. This is the rattling cysticola. If you think sparrows are little brown jobs, <laughs> cysticolas are even worse. There is, in fact, a field guide to little brown jobs in South Africa. Cysticolas are among the ones that cause a lot of trouble. Note the black centers in the feathers here. This helps distinguish it from another other one that we'll see for, see further along in the presentation. These were very common, uh, and they have a pretty distinct song. Oh. And then the African hoopoe, which presumably is different from uh, a different species from the one you might see in Europe. I'm not sure about uh, what 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 all the affinities are there, but they all look pretty much the same. Uh, this is another big antelope called the waterbuck. Uh, it is, of course, the back end uh, because it has that sort of big target, if you will. And this is what they look like from the front. Uh, here we have the little bee eater. This is the only bee eater we saw the whole trip. Uh, cute little fella. And then puppies. Uh, the, uh, the, the, Af excuse me, the, uh, the African hunting dog puppies. Uh, they're basically, they, they, they keep them all together like in communal groups and leave one or two adults to watch uh, while the, the rest of the pack goes off and hunts and so forth. Uh, on one occasion, uh, there, we, there was this little crash or whatever you want to call it of the, the, the young uh, puppies with the two adults and a female lion came wandering by and the two adults were like boom you know on on top of that that, that lion and, and just you know, give, giving it the stink eye and everything else and eventually it, it did move off but uh it's it's really interesting to watch uh this we only discovered later when the the, the leader said to me hey you remember that one woodpecker uh, that turns out that wasn't a cardinal or whatever the heck it was that was a bennett's woodpecker so uh, this is a little different from the cardinal woodpecker that we saw earlier on. 
And then here we have the arrow marked babbler, another kind of dramatic looking bird. Uh, boy, did I have to tweak the light to get this the bird to come out, but uh, uh, you know, post-processing with the photograph. Uh, here we have another African hunting dog. Oh, and uh, the very colorful African uh, pygmy uh, kingfisher. This is all still stuff that we saw at Savvy Sands. So four nights, uh, four days of game drives, so forth. Uh, the uh, the lapping dove, which I guess sounds like it's lapping. Remember that cysticola with the dark centers and the feathers? This one doesn't have it. This is the red face. There is a little bit of red here. Uh, cysticola. Uh, the common bulbul turned out to be pretty common. Uh, we saw that in several locations. And here we have the white-throated robin chat. Pretty colorful bird. Brown snake eagle, looking pretty wild-eyed, I think. And then there are ground hornbills, this being the southern. I don't know if there's a, nor a northern or not, but uh, in any case, uh, yes, they run around on the ground, whereas the other hornbills tend to be flying around up on the trees and on the ground and so forth. This is a much bigger bird than those other hornbills we saw. And then we were entertained by a, a leopard cub at one point, or several times, actually. Uh, very, uh, very... Uh, unconcerned apparently by our presence. And uh, we don't know where mom mommy was. Uh, this is the Wahlberg's eagle. There were a lot of eagles. And then here we have a nice adult male lion. This might have been the group that was munching on the giraffe. I, I don't remember. Uh, the uh, golden-breasted bunting wasn't pointed the right way when I, found, I got the photograph, unfortunately, but uh, you can and see a little yellow on the breast here. And then we have green vertebrate monkeys. We saw them several times. Uh, this being a youngster, uh, you can see daddy's junk there. Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, this is another one of the more dramatic sunbirds, uh, the scarlet chested. And this is a female amethyst hummingbird, or excuse me, sunbird. Uh, this unfortunate bird apparently bounced off the glass and was sitting there stunned for some time. Uh, we never did see a male. So I, I assume with a name like amethyst, they're probably kind of purple. But uh, I got a good photo. <laughs> and there I am with Patsy uh, with giraffes in the background. <laughs> and very messy hair. Uh, another antelope called the bushbuck. Again, we're still at Savvy Sands. And then here we have an adult African fish eagle, big, dramatic, you know, the size of our bald eagle. Uh, they, I, they may even be the same genus. I'm not absolutely positive. I'd have to look into that. Uh, here we have the three-banded plover. Uh, three-banded plover, uh, a lot more uh, interesting, I think, than a killdeer. Check out the, the yellow skin around the eye here, the kind of yellow bit, or excuse me, red bill. Uh, there is There are three bands on, on the breast. And this is the yellow-billed stork, uh, which was perched right next to, do I have that slide there? Yep, right, right next to a gray heron. These things are almost a carbon copy of the gray blue that you know, uh, but uh, they are different species. Uh, it lacks the, uh, the the red thighs of the uh, the great blue. Uh, the throat tends to be a good deal whiter than the great blue. Uh, and there are other subtle differences that I don't get, but we don't see too many of these wandering to our side of the Atlantic. Uh, they, I think a few have turned up in places like Nova Scotia and places like that, but uh, in the lower 48, I don't know if they have too many records for a gray heron. And this, uh, this is this this is our group. Uh, pretty much uh, the last morning, uh, behind you have a big Toyota open top vehicle. It's a three decker, and they're tiered. Uh, you have the driver sitting here. Uh, you'll have a guy sitting on the left fender, the tracker, 
and uh, he will hopefully spot tracks or game or something like that. When we were at Pinda, the guy there actually spotted the only black rhino, which we'll see a little bit later along in the show, uh, that we saw the entire trip. And that, that, that critter had to be two miles away on the other side of the valley. And how he saw it, I don't know. But uh, this, this is our group. Uh, here we have uh, one of the staff, the, the thing, uh, let's see. Uh, he was our driver. He was our tracker. Uh, their names escape me. Mark Abdi, he is a member of the Washington Bird Club. And he was actually sort of the leader. Uh, I don't see Heather in there, his wife. Uh, there's Patsy there, uh, me, and uh, so on. But uh, very nice day. Okay, last game drive, I think. Uh, here's the 20 Eagle. Yet another sunbird, the white breasted. And then we finally went to Pinda, which was, uh, did we drive or? Yeah, I guess, no, no, no. I actually think we took a flight. Uh, yeah, that was the charter flight that we had to take from Scusa to uh, wherever the heck the other other airfield was. And uh, there we uh, we encountered quite a few rhinos to include this baby right, white rhino. With the horn taken off? Though? The horns are taken off. Uh, as as you may or may not know, uh, there's a lot of poaching going on, and uh, the horn is a uh, hot commodity in certain cultures. And uh, in order to prevent poaching, uh, they go out and they have to uh, re-saw it off like about every two to three years. And uh, this involves people flying around in helicopters with dart guns and all that sort of stuff. And, uh, and they even got to saw them off the babies. Uh, here we have bar-winged geese. Uh, these are big geese. They're probably even bigger than Canada geese. Kind of ugly. And uh, another eagle, the Marshall eagle. Uh, this showed up in our cabin. Uh, it's, uh, it's a sphinx moth uh, known as the cape hawk. Uh, pretty big uh, dramatic thing. Looks rather like a Virginia creeper sphinx moth, I think. But... Uh, we had crested guinea fowl actually running around in the camp. Uh, they went running by the platform where we ate and all that sort of thing on several occasions. Uh, they're pretty crazy looking birds. Uh, this was arguably one of the best birds we saw, the banded snake eagle. Those apparently are fairly rare. Uh, and apparently they don't perch in the open all that often either. So. Wow. And then of course, we've seen this elephant before. Uh, another kingfisher we encountered uh, at, uh, at Pinda was the brown hooded kingfisher and uh, the white breasted sunbird, another sunbird. And we had baboons. We also had baboons at Savvy Sands, but they didn't lend themselves to, uh, to photographs. They tended to be somewhat distant. And then here we have the emerald spotted wood dove, and it's called that because of these sort of emerald spots here, emerald, emerald spots here on the uh, the wings. Southern fiscal is a type of shrike, and then the crowned lapwing. Uh, I guess it's like sort of like in the same family as sort of like the northern lapwing and so forth. Uh, and there's the southern lapwing, uh, which uh, which we get in what South and Central America, I think. Uh, here we have another family group of white rhinos who have all had their uh, their horns trimmed, but seem to be growing in. And it was a pinda we finally came across cheetah, and we saw them on several occasions. This being a nice, uh, I think it was a female that we tracked for a while. Uh, here we have the red-fronted tinkerbird. This was right outside our cabin. And uh, he had another chicken, the crested Franklin. A baby zebra. I mean, you can't fix cute, right? <laughs> Yellow-fronted canary. Uh, these are called water thick knees. Uh, <laughs> They do have fairly fat knees, hence the name. 
And here's the waddle pygmy. It does have little waddles hanging off the, uh, and hence the name. Uh, here we have one of the weavers uh, uh, nest uh, conglomerations. I don't remember which species this was. I managed to get the one hippo that didn't have teeth. <laughs> the only photo I got that was half decent. But uh, there was a particular water feature that we would visit that uh, had uh, had hippos. And then here was a white-tailed mongoose that we lit up on the drive back to uh, to, uh, to to camp for dinner. Uh, a young male lion. Uh, over there, you have things called long claws. This sure looks like a meadow lark, doesn't it? Yep. Yeah. Uh, they're not related. This is con covert convergent evolution. Uh, they feel, do the same sort of niche, have the same sort of habits and everything else, but genetically, these are not related to our meadowlarks. Uh, there are other ones with red breasts. Uh, didn't get to see those, unfortunately. Here we have the spectacled thickney, uh, pretty cooperative bird. Uh, wood sandpiper, this ranges up into Europe and stuff. Uh, occasionally one strays over here to North America and people get very excited. Uh, I have yet to see one on this continent. And here, this cute little guy, the African stone chap. Uh, Worm hogs are uh, pretty much self-explanatory. We had those running around. Uh, our only secretary bird, unfortunately, was very distant and yes, kind of fuzzy. Yeah, they're they're a pretty cool bird. And then here, uh, this is the African jacana. Uh, you know, we get jacanas uh, 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 in in like Texas and places like that. Uh, but this is this one, one's you know from the other side, other side of the ocean. And uh, white-faced whistling ducks. Uh, if you're familiar with our black belly, they're you know in the same sort of group, but it's pretty obvious where they get the name. I gotta wet my whistle here. <laughs> ah, thank you. Okay, big. <laughs> okay, and uh, one one big yawn. Uh, from uh, this this was a collared lion actually. Uh, we did have a visit to a Zulu village uh, while we were there, and that's Patsy uh, uh, talking with uh, people from 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 a school that we visited. And uh, here's yet another eagle, the black-chested snake eagle, pretty cool looking bird. Uh, a rhino having a snooze or a rest or something. This is again, white rhino. This is the black rhino. This was taken from probably a mile and a half, two miles away. Uh, apparently it's this whoop in the back here that is the key for telling the difference between the, the, uh, the white, uh, White has kind of more of a rounded back. We went to drive to get closer to it, but oops, a helicopter appeared and uh, scared it off. And uh, we think it was one of the anti-poaching patrols that was going around and darting and sawing off horns and all that sort of thing. But still, it was disappointing that we couldn't get a closer look. This is the Senegal Lapwing, uh, which was right by the, well, it wasn't really a road. It wasn't even so much as a track, really, but you can see the egg right here. This is, this is a type of, uh, you know, plover, uh, shorebird. And she just, she, she wouldn't budge off of that, that, that nest. And then here we have a mother and two young cub cheetahs uh, that put on a very nice show for us. I believe that's mom standing up. Aww. And uh, we got got some itches here. <laughs> uh, the little egret occurs in Africa as well as as Europe and so forth, and occasionally in Delaware. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, pretty much the equivalent of a snowy egret. Uh, the main difference is instead of like the crest you have on the snowy egret, there uh, at least in breeding plumage, there are two distinct plumes that come off the back of the head. And uh, I've seen it seen it twice now, Bombay. 
the African darter is not unlike our Anhanga. Uh, I believe they are related. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get a good uh, a photo to good effect on this particular bird. Uh, another interesting shorebird is the hammer cop. And this was the only one we saw the whole trip, but uh, big honking bill and all brown. Woolly neck storks are some more, yeah, there, there are several stork species, species, obviously. And yes, there are great egrets on the other side of the Atlantic. Pretty much like ours, uh, but uh, I forget what the, the differences are. I think maybe something in the light color. I'm not absolutely positive. Uh, black bellied bustard. Bustards are big migratory birds. Uh, they undergo a lot of pressure from hunting and so forth. Uh, in the Middle East, they hunt these things with falcons. Uh, I don't know if the black belly buff bustard suffers from that, but other bustard species uh, do. Uh, it's a pretty cool bird. Uh, here we have an adult leopard that was just giving us uh, the eye from the side of the road and everything. And But uh, we lit him up and uh, got a fairly decent picture. Uh, at one point when I was walking around, I thought I had a stick or a burr or something in my boot, and it was right at the top of my ankle. And so, you know, whatever, and finally I get back to the room, pull it off. This tick was going through two layers of sock, oh my God. and it hurt. And so far, at least, I have not come down with any weird African diseases. Uh, it may be something called an African Bont B O N T tick. Uh, I'm still waiting for confirmation on my naturalist. Uh, one of the attractions to Pinda is this trogon, the Narina trogon. It has a bright red breast. Unfortunately, it just didn't show to especially good advantage. And uh, here we have the bearded scrub robin. Pretty cool looking bird. Uh, yet another starling, uh, a little better than our starlings, black-bellied starling, although it looks more like red here, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, everybody knows what honey guides are. They are birds that like to eat honey and bees and stuff like that, and uh, they have been known to guide humans to those to better access the hives and so forth. And uh, this was one that Mark was very excited to see. He apparently had not seen one of these before, the African broadbill. Uh, it took me a long time to get on the bird. It wasn't all that far away, but uh, you know, normally uh, if you try and direct me to a bird, I, I, I'm terrible at it. So. <laughs> but eventually I did get on it and it just sat there and uh, posed for some good pictures. From here, we went to Cape Town. This is uh, outside of Cape Town. Uh, heading up towards Table Mountain. And there are interesting birds to see while you're driving around Cape Town. This is the Hartlaub's gull. Uh, you can see this flying around uh, uh, around Cape Town Harbor as well. Uh, we had the more chicken-like birds, the Cape Franklin. Uh, the only eland we saw the whole trip was while we were in the Cape Town area. And the only ostriches we saw we're around Cape Town. Uh, the sacred agavis is uh, is a native bird to Africa. It has been introduced to Europe, where it has become a pest. Uh, but uh, it's white with a black head. Uh, there's a, a cormorant to the left there. Uh, I don't remember which one that is. Uh, they have all black oyster catchers. The African oyster catcher. And then here we have a whole bunch of Cape cormorants. They, they're very abundant. And we went to the, excuse me, Boulder's penguin colony, which had lots of penguins, African penguins. Here we have a relatively young one looking for attention. And then here we have an adult sitting on an egg. Uh, just about every place we went, we saw Hadada ibis. Uh, unfortunately, I just really didn't get a decent picture until we got to Cape Town, apparently. Uh, these are very widespread in South Africa, very noisy. Uh, 
Uh, here we have the red wing starling, again, a rather nicer looking starling. This seems to be pretty much uh, confined to the immediate Cape area, as near as I can tell. And uh, then there were crested terns flying by, sort of like, uh, like our maybe royal tern, except with the yellow bill. Uh, here is the cable car that goes up to the top of Cable Mountain, which is some, like some 1,100 feet. And I got onto that cable car, and I was in stark, abject terror, clutching white knuckle yeah. to the railing. It seems that I have a fear of heights. <laughs> <laughs> and I spent the whole time cowering in the cafe up at the top of the Table Mountain. So uh, Mark and, and Heather went out and saw an orange-breasted sunbird, which is a bird I missed. And... I just, uh, I just couldn't, I couldn't move. Uh, I've since been to my head shrinker and I think we more or less maybe have corrected that, but that's another story. Uh, uh, here we are at the top, top of Cable Mountain. That's Patsy looking very cold. Uh, that of course is the bay out there. And uh, just when we got down to more solid ground, uh, there was the, oh, no, 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 this is when we went to, uh, to uh, to to uh, Stellenbosch uh, Botanical Gardens, which is uh, just outside of, of, of Cape Town, uh, where we encountered the Cape Canary, uh, the southern double collared sunbird, the Cape Robin Chat, olive thrush. This is another one of those kind of like a robin, genus turdus, T O R D U S, which sounds kind of naughty or scatological or something. And uh, uh, the Karu prinia. Uh, this was an elusive bird, but I did manage to capture or get a picture of it. And the spotted eagle, Alice, apparently is a famous resident of Stellenbosch. This is the head right here. He's being obscured by a rock. There's the bill, ear, ear, eye. Big, you know, great horned owl size, maybe bigger. Really cool bird. Uh, the Cape sugar birds are one of the big attractions of Stellenbosch. Uh, this is the tail. <laughs> of the male. They're not real colorful, but they're still a pretty cool looking bird. Uh, we then uh, from Cape Town went out to the wine country. Uh, there wasn't a lot of birding going on there. We did a lot of <laughs> wine tasting. <laughs> but uh, the first uh, vineyard that we stopped at had this Malachite sunbird, which is a pretty dramatic and cool looking bird, I think. Uh, the hotel grounds were probably the best burden uh, while we were in uh, in in in, in Franchuk, uh, where we had the southern boo boo, uh, Cape bull bull. Uh, this was the Huguenot Church in Franchuk. Huguenots are are or were excuse me French pop Protestants who didn't feel too welcome in you know Catholic France. Uh, uh, and uh, there was like the civil wars back in the 1500s and so forth, where uh, tolerance was granted to them. And then Louis XIV revoked the Edict of Nantes, and then hilarity ensued. But uh, uh, that being, <laughs> I forget what year he revoked that, but that basically prompted a lot of Huguenots to emigrate. Some of them wound up in South Carolina, a lot of them went to South Africa. Uh, here we have a blue green sort of lizard called the rock agama. This was at one of the vineyards. Uh, there's Patsy posing with Table Mountain in the background. Uh, this is the clock tower in Cape Town Harbor. And even there, you encounter birds like the Cape Wagtail. We saw this pied kingfisher waiting for the boat out to Robin Island. Uh, kelp gulls are flitting all around the harbor. And uh, here Patsy goes to prison. Uh, this is this is on Robin Island. Robin Island, as you may or may, may not remember back in the apartheid days, was where they sent all the political prisoners. And uh, it's now a museum. And uh, you'll have, uh, uh, you've got, uh, um, what do I want to say? 
Sue will get it eventually. <laughs> uh, the former pro political prisoners actually now serve as tour guides here on Robin Island um, and give you a very interesting perspective on, on that. Uh, this is where Nelson Mandela spent 28 years, I think it was. Uh, this is a typical cell in there. Uh, uh, I, I did not get a picture of Nelson Mandela's cell. I apologize. So, but <laughs> and then here's a kelp bed, uh, just uh, you know, off the island. And there we have it. So I don't know, like... <laughs> I I meant to include the sunset picture, but didn't get around to putting it in there. So, but uh, thank you. I'm happy to entertain any questions you may have. Yeah, good. I got yes, Robert. White rhinos. I heard it. Is there a, those are southern white rhinos? The northern one is one that's pretty much the not. north. The northern white rhino. Uh, last time I heard was basically functionally extinct because there was like only three females left or something like that, and I expect they're all gone at this point. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, no, but in the, in the back there, yes, I'm sorry. Do you know whether you were during the season when they were, they were in breeding plumage or not? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not real, 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 real knowledgeable on seasonality, you know, in, in birds and the plumage of, of South Africa. So I really don't know the answer to that. Um, Probably would have been there more in the springtime. Yeah, yeah, but you know, if, if but if you, you look in the field guides and everything else, you generally don't see you know like in, in some bars you'll see the the summer and, and and the winter plumage and stuff like that. And I don't recall seeing much of that in the field guide, so they may just keep these plumages throughout the year. Uh, some uh, Dave, yes. Uh, another way to another way to um, separate the rhinos. Is the white is actually a, a German word for wide, yeah. and the mouth is very the shape of the muzzle. Yeah. Whereas the black is a narrow snout. Uh, the white rhino is a grazer, so it has a flat thing for grazing. The black rhino is a browser, so it has the long prehensile lips for plucking uh, nummy stuff. We all asleep now. Yes, <laughs> Jeff. Is this uh, who organized the trip? Was this? Uh... Uh, uh, yeah, I didn't really go into that. I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm sorry. Uh, Mark Abdi, who I had mentioned earlier, uh, he works with something uh, with an entity in Stanford, Connecticut called African Portfolios. Mm -hmm. And uh, I knew he was sort of organizing trips for some time. And then finally, like two years ago, I said, Do you have any dates? you know, upcoming. And he said, as a matter of fact, I do. And so long story short, it was through Mark, but he did it through some, uh, through African portfolios in Stanford, Connecticut, who did a very nice job. Uh, the accommodations were universally very comfortable. Food was very good. If you're into exotic game, you'll get lots of opportunities. Uh, the game that they do serve in the the, uh, the which we call it's in the safari camps and so forth is farmed game. It's not stuff that they go out and shoot. Uh, but uh, the food was very good. The accommodations were very comfortable, and it was a really a really really nice trip. Super. Have you thought to put some of those pictures on canvas and put them in your home? <laughs> some of them. I mean, like three of them. I think are wonderful. Uh, haven't gotten around to that yet, but uh, you know maybe someday. Yes, but someday. Yeah. Was this your first trip to Africa? This was my first, and excuse me, this was Patsy and my first trip to Africa. Yes, it may very well be our only trip to Africa. Who knows? Patsy was uh, uh, that vehicle climbing in and out of that. She likened to a jungle gym. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, she's just not that spry anymore. <laughs> okay, yes. Robert. Good. Did you feel safe? Uh, yes. You, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I hear a lot about South Africa. Tremendous crime. But you were he, kept. Yeah. Uh, uh, Johannesburg apparently is notorious for that. We flew into the airport and they took us out 
of Johannesburg to a hotel. I don't know where the hell it was. And it was an enclosed, in a community that was an enclosed compound and so forth. Uh, yes, there are lots of walls with barbed wire on top of them and all that sort of thing in the urban areas. Uh, but for whatever reason, we were kept out of that. Uh, when we were in Cape Town, we were specifically enjoined not to go down something street. I don't remember what it was. They said, you go down there, you're going to get in trouble. And so we all stayed the heck out of that particular state, uh, street. But uh, no, we, 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 we never felt uh, any real danger. Uh, now, you know, you're in these open top vehicles and the lion is like, but for whatever reason, uh, they they apparently are, are are very very conditioned, and they don't lose too too many tourists to uh, <laughs> to uh, to now now the elephant was that, that that elephant coming down the road was was interesting because I mean he came down the road and uh, he 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 had the right of way, you know, and, and we we certainly weren't going to contest that, and uh, we we did we did go into reverse for 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 several yards before. <laughs> Uh, it, it found something else to it, occupy its attention and uh, and so on. But uh, yeah, it was a uh, uh, first uh, first first trip to Africa. Yeah. Uh, I'd be I'd certainly be interested in you know Botswana or Kenya or something like that, and, or you know what there, there's apparently some very interesting stuff in West Africa too. So much time, but only so much money and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So much time. How long were you over there? Uh, it was uh, so about two and a half weeks, I think. Okay. Uh, I yeah. Can we put the thing up that has the dates on it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was about two and a half weeks, and uh, it was was uh, and then we flew uh, flew direct from uh, from 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 Cape Town to uh, to to Newark. Uh, we the official trip actually ended the day uh, before uh, we actually left. We added an extra day, and uh, we managed to get the uh, workouts the trip to Robben Island on on our last morning. Our flight wasn't until something like five in the afternoon, and so on. And uh, and 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 getting a trip out to Robben Island is kind of a dicey thing because weather apparently is is frequently an issue. And uh, in fact, Mark, you know, is, is like, I don't know how many trips to South Africa. And he said he used to try and book a trip to Robin, book trips to Robin Island on these, but it always got canceled for weather and he's just given up on trying to do it. And we were, we, we were lucky. We were, we were blessed with, uh, with, with some good weather. And, uh, and there were birds out on Robin Island too. We saw sacred iris and uh, we thought there were a couple of penguins, uh, several cormorants. Uh, Take her dive is flying around. Uh, uh, and there was uh, a pigeon or two. Okay, is everybody asleep now? Yeah. Yeah.